Hi, I'm Thomas Henson with ThomasHenson.com, and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. Today's question is about Python options in Big Data. Find out more right after this. So today's question comes in from YouTube, and if I pronounce your name wrong, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but it comes in from Vingindron, and his question is, thanks for the video, and thank you for watching. Uh, for people who are self-learners like me, when we start learning Hadoop or Apache Spark or Kafka, all the examples that are available on the internet are with Java. Also, there's a lack of material available for these tools using Python. And so this question was posed back from when we were talking about, do you have to know Java to be a big data developer? And we said that you don't have to, there's, there's a ton of options out there that allow for you to abstract away some of the Java. And so I'm gonna break this question down in a couple different areas and a couple different parts. And so the way I'm gonna look at it first is if you're just starting out in Hadoop and in the ecosystem and you're looking at Kafka and Spark and Hadoop, a lot of the examples as far as the code and the way that it's written are gonna be in Java. Now with Spark, there are some different options. So Spark has options for you know writing your Spark jobs in Scala, writing your Spark jobs in um, Python. And so it's, they have a really good documentation around that. Some of the other tools, not so much. But a lot of the tools that we're talking about, you don't have to specifically know Java unless you want to contribute or do something outside the box to, of those tools. So for example, Hadoop. If you want to use Hadoop out of the box, to write your MapReduce jobs, you're probably gonna to have to do something in Java if you're not using something like Hive or something like Pig that's gonna abstract away that. And so when we use something like Hive or something like Pig, you're able to do it in more of a SQL-like syntax. And so that kind of helps you abstract away. But if you're gonna write, say, some custom functions in Pig and you wanna take advantage of that, most of those are gonna be done in Java, but there are options out there for Python as well. There aren't as many examples of those out there, but there are examples out there that show you how to use those and how to write those user-defined functions in Pig, for example, in Python and some of the other ones. You do have to dig around, so it is a little bit harder when we're talking about that. But for somebody that's just starting out, it's really an awesome opportunity just to be able to jump in and start using Pig or Hive, or even just using Hadoop out of the box and, and see some of those functions. Now, as far as Hadoop, there are also ways to write MapReduce jobs using um, Python, and there are a couple different options out there too. But I will say, and I agree with you, majority of those examples that you're gonna find are gonna be in Java. You're really gonna to have to dig around to see those, but there are options and there are ways to get around it. Now, I will say 90% of what you're doing when you're just starting out to maybe even 100%, you're not really gonna to need to write any of those custom functions, right? You're just trying to get a learn, try to get a feel for how everything's written and how you can start you know, implementing this in your own center and kind of you know, just, just doing, doing your pieces. Now, once you start getting into it a little bit, little bit further, you might need to use some Java, but like I said, there's still some options out there for Python and Scala, and especially as we start to look at Spark, and I'm gonna come back to the Spark part now and talk about how their documentation shows you know, all their examples are written with Scala and Java. Now, the Python is still kind of being built out, so the documentation, there's a lot of examples in Python, but there's still, there's still a couple that need to, be, need to be worked out there. But if you're doing anything with Spark, I mean, that's one that you can, you know, whether you're a beginner with no Java experience or, you know, a seasoned Java veteran, you can go in and, you know, start using Spark, look at the examples, look at, look at the documentation, and pretty much never write any Java, too. Now, if we're talking about contributing, so this is kind of the big caveat around that. So if we're talking about contributing to these products, that is totally correct. You know, most of those products are gonna be written in Java. And if you really want to be a part of, you know, what Kafka's doing or, you know, the, the source code with Hadoop or Spark, you're really gonna be, you know, behind. And that's one thing, we're, one area where you're really gonna to wanna to know Java to be, be able to do that. Well, I hope I answered your question. Um, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, if you have any questions, uh, send them in. Uh, send your questions in, and I'll try my best to answer them um, here on uh, Big Data, Big Questions. Thanks again.